What's up guys, back by popular demand. We are doing another camera phone test. Now we did the S22 Ultra camera phone test. A lot of you like that. Thank you guys for, so much for the comments and for the likes and for watching. So now we're gonna pit this phone against two of the other top in Android phones when it comes to cameras. The all new Xiaomi 12 Pro and the Oppo Find X5 Pro. That's a partnered with Hasselblad. Which phone is the best when it comes to cameras? We're about to find out. We're gonna do front-facing cameras. We're gonna do photography. We're gonna do video. We're gonna do all that great stuff. So let's get down to it. I give a big thanks to each of these uh, companies, Samsung Singapore, of course, Xiaomi Singapore, and Oppo Singapore. Having said that, these are our thoughts and our thoughts only. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and like this video. It helps us out a lot. All right. I'm gonna give you a Cliff Notes version of this review just in case you don't have time to watch this entire video, but I hope you guys do. We'll also put chapter markers throughout this so you can skip to the portion that is more relevant to you. But I will say this, each of these phones have some standout features the other phones do not have. If there's one clear winner out of all this, it's a tough one to say, but I will say that uh, Samsung has got four cameras versus three on the other two phones. But does that mean that four is better than three? We're gonna find out, but I will say, Samsung has really impressed me in this battle. With that, let's test these phones out first with the front-facing cameras. Okay, our first phone we're gonna start off with is the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now, here's the thing about the Xiaomi and the Oppo. They only have 1080p cameras on the front-facing camera. They do not have 4K like the Samsung. So right there, the Samsung's already ahead, but it's not always about the resolution because nowadays on TikTok and Instagram, we're only using 1080 anyway. We can't use 4K nonetheless. Let's see how this performs. We're gonna be doing video here, front facing camera, screen recording as well. Now, let's go into, we can turn on HDR if we want. We're gonna turn down all the beauty modes because it gets absolutely insane. Okay, HDR, right off the bat, it softens my skin way too much. Killing that, wanna be more natural like this. You wanna see my age, there we go. Now we're in 1080, 30 frames per second on this, and uh, just gonna be a walking and talking and testing this out, see how it exposes in the background of this. Now, in the back, you're gonna see that the sky is pretty much blown out, but when we look out there, you can still see clouds. So, yeah, it's a little bit overexposed, but I do look, I'm in focus, and yeah, stabilization is pretty good as I'm walking here and I'm talking, everything looks really stable. There's Zaki and Zeno right there. What's up, guys? Yes, yeah, I mean, it's clear, pretty sharp, no, she's all, but a little bit brighter than I would expect. I would expect a little bit more of a tone down for the back end. So see a sky completely white, but the sky is not white. We don't have white skies. So that is the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now another guy, a couple of new features in the Xiaomi 12 Pro, of course, is HLG and HDR10 Plus when you're doing video with the front facing camera. So HDR10 Plus may not work so well with Premiere as well, what we're editing with right now at Geek Culture. So we're gonna try HLG here and see how this looks. Now, it's in HLG, right looking at the screen here, really not much difference than the standard uh, front-facing camera, of course, and we look into it uh, in post, we'll see the difference. But again, the sky is completely blown out. There's no clouds, no detail whatsoever. I'm exposed correctly, so it's exposing for the face for, foremost than anything else, which is fine. But if you do want to get that dynamic range, you're gonna miss it a little bit. Now, I am seeing a little bit of blue in the clouds, just a tint of blue but it's still not what I would expect to see out of this. So I'll say exposure for the face is great. The rest of it, however, it's only so-so. So we're -so. So taking a couple photos here with the front-facing camera as we need to do because we also take photos, right, right. So here's a standard photo and let's just take a shot of this. That's without HDR. Let's turn on HDR. We'll see what the difference is. And then we're gonna go to portrait mode does a pretty decent job. It does look a little synthetic, but again, it's not too bad. And of course you can adjust the bokeh to your liking. So you can make it much uh, more severe, or tone it down a little bit. I always keep it around like F5 to 6.3 thereabouts. It looks a bit, that looks more natural on smartphones versus like F2 or F4 where it can look a little bit too fake. Uh, but it does a decent job, not too bad. So now we're testing the front-facing camera with the Oppo Find X5 Pro. We'll be doing video, then photos. Okay, in video, we're gonna turn off the AI for this a second. Uh, we're gonna turn off the uh, stabilization. We're at 1080p at 30 FPS now, because you do not get 4K with the Oppo or the Xiaomi. So let's kick it off with video here. 
Now, right off the bat, this video looks a little bit more contrasty, but the sky's still blown out. Still blown out, not seeing much detail, not much dynamic range. Um, again, what we see on the screen is not always what we get when we look out on the computer screen, because sometimes things will change. So looking at it right now, it looks pretty decent. It's not too bad. Uh, let's make sure the screen brightness is up. The screen brightness is all the way up. I would say the Xiaomi looked a little bit brighter than the Oppo, but this is not too bad as well. Okay, now I've turned on AI, and now the sky is exposed beautifully. You can see the clouds in the background. Everything has better dynamic range. Even with the skin softening turned off, it looks like my skin is a little bit soft in here with the Oppo, but the AI is doing a better job, I think, than the, the, the standard version. If you want more dynamic range, more you know detail in your background, you can see the palm trees, you can see the clouds. This all looks really good. The stabilization on this is probably not as good as the Xiaomi off the bat, but I haven't turned on stabilization on the front facing camera yet. We'll do that in just a second. But overall, I have to say the image quality looks pretty good. Now when I turn on the stabilization, the AI goes off. So you have a choice, AI, which you get better dynamic range or stabilization. But as I turn around here, the stabilization, it's pretty stable and it looks pretty good, I have to say. So, uh, I mean, the background's not even bouncing, I'm bouncing. This is pretty, almost surreal. There's Zaki right there. What's up, Zaki? What's up? What's up? As you can see, the exposure, it's a little bit delayed in terms of how it uh, responds. There's Zaki, there's me. But the sky is completely blown out here when we're using stabilization. All right, now we're gonna be testing out the photo modes here on the Oppo Find X5 Pro's front-facing camera. Now here's the thing, I'm turning off HDR first and this is a little bit more exposed than the Xiaomi. Uh, I would say a little bit more than I would like it to be. It could bring it down a little bit. Now you probably can do this a little bit in post. Let me turn off all this, uh, all these retouching aspects here because there's so many options you can, you can tweak in this phone. You can change your eye size, your nose, your cheeks, your jawline. You can become a different looking person out of a front facing camera out of these, uh, these phones. It's quite insane. All right. Let's try it out. You hear that click? That's the Hasselblad click because this is a partnership with Hasselblad. So we'll get into the pro camera section in just a minute when we talk about that, but you're getting a lot of those Hasselblad, those, that, that uh, UI, the sounds that's in this Oppo Find X5 Pro, which is cool. I'm a big fan of Hasselblad. And you get the orange shutter release button just like on your uh, X1D and X1D2 and also the other Hasselblad cameras as well. That orange shutter button, when you see that on a camera, you know you're talking quality. Look at the end results. HDR, sky is balanced out. I look really good. I have to say the HR does a decent job when it comes to photos. And then now let's go to portrait mode. Turn off all that uh, beauty stuff here. Portrait mode. I will say this, the colors are very natural coming out of this camera. Um, it is a little bit more exposed than the Xiaomi, but the colors for the front facing look more, say, true to life. I mean, that's part of the Hasselblad uh, technology that's coming into play here. So yeah, I'm happy with it. Looks really good. Okay, now let's go to the Samsung S22 Ultra. Okay, now we're testing out the front-facing camera for video on the Samsung S22 Ultra. Now, a couple things to note of. In terms of the feel of the phone, this is a very large phone. I prefer the feel of the Oppo Find X5 Pro and the Xiaomi 12 Pro over this in terms of feel because when you are taking photos and videos with your smartphone, you want a phone that feels very secure in your hands. This feels very slippery. Now, it doesn't have a case like the other two have because those come with cases inside the box. You have to pay extra for that, but this is a larger phone overall. So that's something to take note of if you're really into videography and photography and you want a good feeling phone, this may be a deal breaker for you, but it's about image quality, right? Right, let's talk about video for a second. Now with the Samsung, you get the 4K 60P on the front facing camera. Now you do not get this with the Xiaomi or the Oppo. So the Samsung already wins in that department. But as I mentioned earlier, if you're using TikTok or Instagram Reels or uh, Stories, you're not shooting in 4K. You are shooting in 1080 or 720 for that matter. So 4K, do you need it? 
Well, it depends on how you want to use the front-facing camera. If you're going to be combining this with other footage, let's say for a YouTube video and you want everything in 4K, this will come in handy. If you're just doing it for Instagram or for TikTok, it really doesn't matter. Anyway, let's try this off in the basic settings first. We're turning off HDR, we're turning off uh, stabilization. We're just gonna go straight out of camera with the front facing at FHD 30 uh, FPS. Looking at this right now, I'm still getting that same blown out sky when you have HDR turned off, okay? But I will say this on the Samsung, my face looks a little bit more detailed than it did on the Oppo or the Xiaomi 12 Pro, but that's just looking at the display right here. We'll have to look on the computer screen to give you the full uh, results on that. I will say though, it does expose more for everything else. The face is not as exposed or as bright as it is on the Xiaomi or the Oppo as well. So everyone's gonna have their own personal preference. You may feel this is more natural. You can see the sky, you can see the blue in the sky, whereas the other two, you could not see that unless HDR was turned on, but you can see it here. So that's a, a tip to Samsung on this. But overall it looks good. No stabilization, I'm walking right now, and even without that, the stabilization is pretty good, I have to say. We'll turn that on in a second so you can see the difference. But overall, I would say there's a better balance to this image than the Xiaomi and the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Okay, let's turn on HDR and let's turn on stabilization to see if there's a difference. Okay, so when we turn on stabilization, you are gonna get a little bit of a crop in on your image, which happens on most cameras, so it's not a big deal on that. Now with HDR, looking at the display here, my face is a bit darker because it's exposing for the sky and the face. So you do, you do lose a little bit of that brightness in the face. Again, you can fix that in post, but it is something to take note of. Stabilization is much improved though. Uh, but you know, this is what's interesting about it. I mean, there are no right or wrong on this. It depends on your personal preference. Some people, people will like this natural look and some people will say, look, I prefer a brighter face and I don't care about the back. Uh, you know, the background. So if that's the case, then you can opt for the other two as well. But here's the thing that I did notice on these phones is that actually on the Samsung, you don't have all the settings on the top like you do on the Xiaomi or the Oppo. So to get into this, it's a, it's a two-step process. We have to tap on settings, then tap on those selections versus on the Oppo and the Xiaomi. It's right up there on the top menu bar and you can actually just select what you want there and you get it right into your settings much easier. So maybe this is something you can customize in the Samsung, I don't know, but as it stands right now, it uh, seems that the, the other two give you the better options right off the bat. Okay, let's take some photos here with the Samsung S22 Ultra and see how they compare to this Xiaomi and Oppo. With no HDR, very detailed, very nice image quality. I have to say the front facing camera on this is very impressive. Um, a little bit more contrasty than the Oppo Find X5 and it's right up there with the Xiaomi. So I see the Xiaomi and the Samsung are very similar. But I gotta say, this is a really good front-facing camera for photography. Now let's uh, try it with HDR on and see how this looks. Not too bad, I mean, the sky's okay. Let's do another shot here to see if there's a difference with the sky in the background. Okay, HDR does kick in. You do see all the clouds in the background. It almost looks a little synthetic. It almost looks too good, but uh, it does work. And let's try portrait mode to see if there's a difference. Now it's taking the uh, phone a little bit of time to render the portrait mode. And here's the one thing about the, the Samsung, which I like, is you can see the individual hairs, it does separate that. So it does look more natural than the Oppo and the Xiaomi. So in portrait mode, I'll give it to the Samsung. Anyway, that's it for the front facing camera. Now let's go to the big boys, the rear cameras for video and photography. So our first test will be with the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Now I'm personally excited about this because I enjoy shooting with Hasselblad cameras and this is a partnership with Hasselblad. So there are some interesting specs to this camera system. You have three cameras, you have a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, 50 megapixel ultra wide and a 13 megapixel telephoto. You also do get macro mode on the ultra wide uh, lens like you would on other camera systems out there. And uh, of course it's powered by the Mari Silicone X processor in this, so it's a dedicated processor for the photography and videography aspect of this camera because it is using the Snapgen, uh, Snapdragon 8th Gen 1 chipset inside of this. But uh, Oppo is trying to give you some extra oomph with this photography and videography out there. So what we'll try to do now is take some photos wide angle, ultra wide angle and telephoto. We'll shoot in RAW plus and also in JPEG. And then we'll go inside and we'll look at some of the images on Lightroom. We'll talk about the, what I find in them in terms of grading, in terms of the out, out of the camera image quality and all that great stuff. So with that, Let's get down to taking some photos with the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Now what's interesting about this, of course, is you're gonna get Hasselblad's color science. That's what this touting is gonna be inside this camera system. And uh, if you've ever seen Hasselblad's colors, they're just really unique. Reds pop, 
um, greens pop as well. I am noticing that this is a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant than what I'm seeing with my naked eye right here. So this could be part and parcel with the, uh, the whole processing that's going on here. Now it's each their own. Of course, we can shoot in raw and then we can change that. I love the shutter sound of this though. Isn't the shutter sound so badass on this? The shutter, the shutter sound makes this camera system right here. Okay, let's go over to this wall here. We got a bright yellow wall. Now, these are sample images, folks. These are not gonna be anything that you're gonna wanna post up and, and brag about, but I just wanna kind of work with different colors. We're here at Arab Street in Singapore to try that out. Let's turn off HDR on this. The yellows do come alive on this. They really do. Um, I would say it's pretty accurate maybe slightly a little bit more brighter than what I'm seeing normally out of the eye, but okay, it still looks good. And I think, but you know, here's the thing on social media, just a little bit of a tip or trick for you guys out there. If you want more people to take notice of your images on social media, you make them a little more saturated, a little more vibrant, it catches the eye. So maybe that's kind of what Oppo's doing here, baked into the image in the JPEG to make it a little bit more appealing when you're looking at this. Okay, let's take a look at this shot right here. And we see we got red, we got yellows, we got blues, we got greens with these benches here. There's a lot of colors happening here. Now we're gonna go to 50 megapixel mode on this. Just out of camera right here, this is very impressive. This is a beautiful how it renders colors. Now I'm gonna go into wide angle. Get this treat right here. This is a really good testing area here because now you get to see all the colors, how it handles. Now here's the setting inside the camera, of course, when you're 50 megapixel, you can only use the ultra wide and the wide because those are the only two lenses that can do 50 megapixel. Now when you turn that off, then you have access to all three. As I mentioned, the telephoto is 13 megapixel, the wide is uh, 50 and the ultra wide is 50. So turning that off here, let's just do telephoto. Looking at the images here, I would definitely say the 50 megapixel mode does make the images look a lot better. Dynamic range, everything else looks fantastic on that. Here we go, three, two, one. And then we're gonna go ultra wide. Stay there, Isaac. All right. I have to say, not too bad. It renders it really quite well. So we're talking about portrait mode now. On this camera, of course, like most cameras use the telephoto and the wide angle lens. Now, when you're using portrait mode for wide angle, please be careful because it can look really fake. Especially if you're taking a picture of somebody, it can look like they're cut out and pasted on the background, which is not how photos look like. I mean, unless you're shooting at 0.95, and even then it can look a little bit too much. Um, but I will say this looks relatively good. I mean, the hair is cut out is what is nice. You can see the details in the strands of hair, which looks pretty realistic. The colors are awesome. The skin tones out of the Oppo Find X5 Pro are fantastic. You're getting that Hasselblad color science which I love Hasselblad's uh, skin tones, by the way, they're awesome. And I'm seeing that right here, right here with Zaki. So I've shot it in JPEG, now I'm gonna shoot this in RAW, and we're gonna see what this looks like as well. Now to go into RAW, you have to go into the More option here, and then go into Hasselblad, uh, has an as the Hasselblad logo with Pro. The wide angle. Good. We're gonna go into this, and we're gonna do ultra high res. Ultra high res is gonna take multiple photos and stack them together. And there's a lot of detail on that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the uh, Oppo Find X5 Pro. Gotta say the image out on the screen looks fantastic. Of course, we're gonna go into Lightroom, we'll take a look at those images. Now let's try out with the Xiaomi 12 Pro. So now we're using the uh, Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now here's the interesting thing about these cameras. All three lenses are 50 megapixel cameras. So in theory, we should be getting pretty much the same image quality no matter if we're an ultra wide, wide, or telephoto. We'll try that out right now. We're the same as situation as we are with the Oppo Find X5 Pro, the same scenery, to see how it renders colors, details, all that great stuff. So let's uh, try this out real quick. We're now just in basic photo mode, no raw, everything's turned off, and uh, let's see what it looks like here. There you are, Zach, you look at that. The colors are very saturated on this, the reds, are just screaming off the screen on this one. It is really bright, the blues as well. So the Oppo had a little bit more of a natural look to it. This looks a little bit more accentuated. 
everyone's gonna have their own preference on what they like, but this is just what I'm seeing on the screen. Of course, when we go into Lightroom, there may be a difference on that as well. Now, Zaki is modeling this uh, backpack here. We're going to portrait mode on that. Does a decent job of uh, detecting him, but some of the hair is a little bit blurry in that regard. Yeah, this one, I would say the portrait mode is not as good as the Oppo. I think the Oppo has got a better handle when it comes to the portrait mode on this. Go to 50 megapixel version. 50 megapixel version looks good as well. I mean, a little bit more dynamic range in that regard, but I would say it's still more saturated. I will say this, when you're using the raw mode or the pro mode on the Xiaomi, the images tend to look a lot better than with using the standard JPEG and just letting it do its thing. Um, so that's something to take note of on that. Now with the S22 Ultra, we have four cameras versus three cameras like the other two phones. And uh, so we're probably gonna get better image quality when we go into the telephoto or ultra wide angle versus the Xiaomi or the Opal, or will we not? Let's find out. Let's take out the standard photo here. Uh, Zero, let's move away here. I'm gonna take a photo of this uh, area. Now, right off the bat, this is not as saturated as the Oppo or the uh, Xiaomi for that matter. The colors are more muted. I would say they look more muted than what I'm seeing in real life. But plenty of detail. There's a lot of detail in these images here. I will say though, the Samsung and the Oppo are really neck and neck when it comes to portrait mode in terms of that realistic bokeh from the, your subject being in focus into the background being out of focus. Um, they do a decent job separating the hairs. You could give the edge to Samsung a little bit in this regard, but I think the Oppo is right there as well. Now let's try with uh, the wide angle portrait mode. So now we're just gonna test out RAW real quick on the uh, S22 Ultra. Now here's the thing, you need to download a separate app to shoot in RAW, which is ridiculous. You shouldn't need to. All the other phones have it built into the app system, but here you don't. So anyway, it is what it is, as they say. Let's do go to expert raw mode. Because this raw takes multiple images to stack it. Okay. Taking a while there. All right, so that's pretty much it with the uh, raw feature of it. It's a little slow, probably it's a little bit buggy. Uh, it's unfortunate, I would expect more from Samsung in that regard, but maybe there'll be a software update. Anyway, we're running low on battery here. We're gonna go back to the studio. We're gonna test out video mode and I'll come back with my final thoughts. But in the meantime, here's a message from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Secret Lab. Here at Geek Culture, we love our Secret Lab chairs, especially the all-new 2022 Titan Evo with its revamped four-way lumbar system for enhanced back support. If P Leather 2.0 isn't your cup of tea, then consider the all-new Soft Weave, even more soft and breathable than before. The chair comes in more colors, including this lovely frost blue. The Titan Evo is even magnetized, allowing the head pillow to stick on the headrest without straps. Of course, there are even more new features, so do check them out at secretlab.co. All right, guys, we're now in Lightroom taking a look at images here from the Oppo, the Samsung, and the Xiaomi phones. If you've been sticking with us this long, thank you so much for watching. We put a lot of work in this video. It's probably one of our longest we've done on the channel thus far. Okay, let's get into it. Let's look at the Oppo first. Um, let's take a look at this JPEG image here of Zaki. And uh, these are somewhat simple images, just more for a sample than anything else. But looking at this real quick, we can take kind of zoom in on this. There's a lot of detail here, and I think the image in JPEG works relatively well here. ISO 100 at 6.25 millimeters at 4.5, one over 160th of a second at J the shot in JPEG. Looks good, right? Now this of course has been edited slightly. This is before and this is after, before and after. I really just adjusted the highlights and a little bit of the exposure for the most part because the colors are bang on. They're fantastic. Now let's go over to a uh, DNG file here uh, from the Oppo because all these phones do shoot in DNG for the most part. Uh, Samsung is more very interesting in the sense that you have to download a separate app, but we'll get to that in just a bit. But anyway, let's look at the Oppo here. And as you can see, I mean, it's pretty decent. And now the JPEGs will be naturally sharper when you are shooting in RAW or DNG for that matter. You will notice the images are softer. You see this on the Xiaomi as well and also on the Samsung, but it does a decent job. And there's a lot of information here. Again, ISO 100, 5.97 millimeters, F1.7, one over 1700 of a second. Uh, this was pretty much set on the camera as it is. And it looks good. I mean, yeah, no complaints at all. Not as sharp as the JPEG, but again, 
Do you need to shoot in RAW for a smartphone? It really depends on your application, but I'm, I'm overall pleasantly surprised. And here's the uh, what it looked like before, and here's after. Okay, let's go to a couple of images here. This is of me, and this was shooting in X-Pan mode. Now, X-Pan mode only shoots in JPEG, but I do like the images that come out of this. And uh, looking at the detail right here, it is sharp. I mean, a little bit over sharpened happened. You could probably say if you wanna be a little bit nitpicky, but I think for JPEGs, it does a decent job. And of course, when you're looking at things in Lightroom, you're gonna see all of uh, the uh, flaws in all the images here because again, these are developed to be seen on a smartphone uh, display versus a laptop or a computer display like I have here. But it looks good. No issues at all with that. Like the colors that are coming out of it, very happy. And I love the X-Pan in black and white. I just absolutely love the way that this looks. It has a very film-esque look to it. And I love this uh, 65 by 24 aspect ratio. It's just ab absolutely awesome. And it looks great. Look at the detail in there, sharp eyebrows, beard hair. You can see it all right there. Very happy with the end result on that. And uh, here's a couple more. Here's Zaki, we we're at a coffee shop here. And you can see it's a little bit over sharpened here on the eyeglasses, but it looks good. Still great for posting on social media, no issues at all. As I mentioned, looking in the Lightroom, you are gonna see something different than what you're gonna see on the smartphone um, display. And you can definitely see it here. And there's a lot of detail that these, uh, these cameras do cover because they're pretty much all well stacked up. Okay, now let's look at the uh, Xiaomi selects here. Now we did get some shots of Zaki here in various different poses. Let's take a look real quick here. Uh, this is shot in DNG and we go on this. It's decent, not too bad, a little soft, but as I mentioned, DNG will, you know, it will be softer than JPEG because there's a lot of correction happening with the JPEGs, but it's a decent job and you can actually play along with the files a little bit if you want to get into that. You know, drop the highlights down a little bit, bring the exposure in if you want to boost up the contrast slightly, just to give it a little bit more pop, uh, a little bit of vibrance actually to it there. It looks good, no complaints at all. Um, and of course, that's how it looks in a DNG file. Let's look at a JPEG here of Zaki giving me the hand on the neck pose. Look at this, hand on the neck pose. ISO 50, 7.1 millimeters, F1.9, one over 180th of a second. These are, these are all auto settings inside the camera, so it is what it is. This has been edited slightly. This is before and this is after, before and after. Again, colors are really good. I mean, it's slightly a little bit overexposed on that. That's how the camera renders it. But again, you can adjust that very easily in any sort of you know, post-production software that you have here. And I'm happy with it. Um, compared to the Oppo, I would say the Oppo's got slightly more detail to it, in my personal opinion, slightly more detail. Uh, but as it stands, I mean, these are very relatively close and you know what, both cameras are really good, but I would give the edge to the Oppo in that regard. Okay, let's look at a couple other images here. Let's look at this uh, picture of my uh, Volkswagen Tiguan. This is of course in portrait mode here. And I gotta say the portrait mode in this is really good actually. It does it detect the lines relatively well. It does a good job. You are gonna see flaring coming off of smartphone lenses. No matter what camera you use on what phone, you're gonna see some sort of flaring. If you use it correctly, it can be sort of artistic, but it can also be a pain in the butt. But I have to say, look at the detail on this. I'm really happy with the end results. Um, this is very sharp for a smartphone right here. And this is a JPEG ISO 99. ISO 99, who would have thought, but Xiaomi gives it to you. But it looks really good. This has been edited slightly. Let me show you the before, and let me do this the after, before and after, sort of, you know, made it look a little bit more autumn with the leaves here, but really happy with it. Again, the portrait mode is absolutely fantastic. The nice fall off coming off to the back of the Tiguan here, to the front where it's sharp. This looks really natural, very happy. Okay. And here's another shot here of this outside the car as I was driving. Look at the colors out of this, which is absolutely awesome. And again, this is kind of what it looked like. I mean, this is before and this is after. Before, after. It kind of accentuated the blues a little bit, but we had a beautiful sunset happening here. Accentuated some of the colors, give a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more pop. And this is ISO 282. And this is on the wide angle lens and it's pretty good, I have to say, not too bad at all. Definitely usable for social media. Of course, when you wanna zoom in on this, you're gonna see some smearage, smudging and some, you know, a little bit of distortion here. But again, I'm shooting out of my windshield, so it's not gonna be as sharp as if I was not doing so, but I'm happy with the overall image and how it looks. All right, and yeah, there's just a couple other ones. Zach, you uh, posing with this backpack here, DNG file. And 
yeah, it's a little bit soft on here. You know, this is the interesting thing about this. The camera says it doesn't focus, but when you look at it here on the computer, it's not. But anyway, this is uh, the results that we got. Um, firmware will be updated on these phones pretty regularly. So, I mean, look for improvements to be happening here. Of course, we were testing this phone right when it was launched with the, you know, the first uh, version of the firmware out there. So it will get better as we go on. But yeah, you can see it's a little bit soft here. Not optimal, but again, it's a DNG. Okay, let's go to the Samsung images here real quick and uh, then we'll go to our final thoughts. Okay, now we are in the Samsung S22 Ultra's um, selects here. Again, we're trying different poses here, but nonetheless, all the same lighting. This is Zaki right here between the two chairs, giving them that ultimate Zoolander look here. This was a JPEG. Um, this was shot in portrait mode and it's absolutely beautiful. Look at the fall off. But uh, here's one thing I really like about the Samsung S22 Ultra and I did notice this in the Oppo as well. Good separation for the hair here. It's not perfect. It's not like you're using a normal camera, but it's pretty good for a smartphone. Um, a lot of detail here, great colors coming out of this. Uh, here's what it looks like before and after, before, after. Just, just a slight edit, just to kind of give a little bit of more oomph to the image but very happy with the results on that. Okay, here's a close-up of Zaki again, a little bit blurry on this DNG versus JPEG. Something you're gonna notice in all three of these phones, DNG is slightly softer. Um, I would say the DNG out of this one, not as good as the Oppo, and probably very on par with the Xiaomi. It could be slightly under, I don't know, it's really close, but again, you know, you can play around with that a little bit more. Here's a DNG file as well, a little bit blurred out. Um, this is just happening with these phones, folks, and nothing I can do with that. So it says it's in focus, you go with that, and that's what the end result is. So if DNG is not really doing any sort of post-processing to the images, then this is what you're actually getting out of the camera system. I will say this, I don't have the iPhone uh, 13 Pro in this comparison, but the iPhone 13 Pro's raw images are better than what I'm seeing here out of all these three thus far. Again, maybe we'll do a comparison in the near future, but if you're just wondering, those are my thoughts on that. And here's just this night shot here at this uh, top of this rooftop here in uh, DNG. Again, softer, gives you some room to play with if you wanna play with the, sh the highlights and shadows a little bit more. You know you're gonna blow out the lights right there, but you've got some room to play with in, in this regard versus the JPEG, which would probably break up a little bit sooner. But again, if you're looking for sharpness and detail, you might be lacking a little bit. All right, guys, those are the samples from the Samsung. Now let's go to my final thoughts on these three phones. All right, so here's a video test. We're at the Geek Culture Studios here, how we normally shoot a lot of our reviews, but we're using the Oppo Find X5 Pro. This is in 4K with AI on. It's gonna give you a sense with optimal lighting, how the image quality can be, and if it will replace for, you know, replace your normal camera if you wanna do some video. So this is what it looks like. And then Zach, you'll turn off AI now. This is what the footage looks like. So if you see a difference or not, I can't see anything right now, but of course you'll be able to see it in the uh, video sample here on the screen to see if the difference is. But of course AI will help in some regards and in some ways it can impede the image. It depends on your preference, but it's an option for you. Now you can't do flat or any sort of log profile, unfortunately, that's not available in the native apps. Of course, you can use Filmic Pro and things like that. You can download those apps and utilize it, but as it stands right now in the Oppo app, it's just the standard color uh, science that's coming out of the uh, Hasselblad combination with the Oppo Find X5 Pro. I prefer without the AI though. It's yeah. more natural. More yeah. natural without the AI? And you got details there, yeah. We don't want details. Details are important. Now, one of the cool features of the Oppo Find X5 Pro is actually the film mode. Now, this is, gives you more, let's call it like professional video mode. And you have active steady shot in this, which will crop in, but we turn that off because we're here on a tripod in the studio. But it also allows you to shoot in log or HDR. Now you have to choose between the two. Now we're shooting a log right now, which uh, Zach, you will then color grade it and see how this looks. But this gives you a really nice option that you don't necessarily get in a lot of smartphone cameras out there. You usually have to download separate apps to do this, but Oppo's put this inside of the uh, Find X5 Pro, which makes it very interesting for videographers out there. We tried this on the Xperia Pro I, with not the greatest success, but how does this look? Let us know your thoughts below. All right, so now we're testing out the Xiaomi 12 Pro. No HDR, no HLG. This is straight out of camera in 4K. Now, of course, this can do 8K as well, but we're not gonna be showing 8K in this test. We'll show it in just a bit, but uh, yeah, this is what the image quality looks like, of course, with lighting here in the studio. So now we're testing out the HDR video on this, and you do lose that box where you have the focus tracking on my face, but I mean, I seem to be in focus so far, and 
Which one do you prefer, HDR or non-HDR? Let us know, and then we'll try HLG as well, just in case you wanna see what that looks like. So here is HDR10+, Plus, and yeah, I mean, HDR10 Plus can be a little bit some, a much for some. Some people will enjoy it. Also, it depends on your editing software if it can handle the uh, the imaging on this. Now, we do know that Premiere Pro can have some issues with HDR at times, uh, or any other editing software. So keep that in mind if you want to put this onto your you know your timeline. If you're editing on Final Cut, Premiere, whatever the case may be, you may have to make some adjustments. But uh, you know, if you're just going to be publishing online, you know, right out of camera, could be okay. What are your thoughts? Which do you prefer, HDR10 Plus? Well, let's try HLG now and see what are the differences are. So here's what HLG looks like on the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now this is something interesting with a smartphone to have HLG or HDR10 Plus inside of it. Xiaomi's trying to give you the best of all worlds with video, but it's up to your discretion which one do you like. Do you prefer non-HDR, HDR10 Plus, or HLG? Let us know in the comment section below. So now we're testing out video on the S22 Ultra in 4K. Now here's something interesting on the wide angle lens or the standard lens, it's wider than the other two because you have four lenses on this versus three. So Samsung is giving you options for the wide angle. You got ultra wide angle, wide angle, telephoto and super telephoto or however terminologies you wanna to put to it, but you have four lenses regardless. But how does the video look? Now we don't have HDR turned on, everything is basic. And now we're gonna try on some other modes to see which video option is better for you on this regard. So now we're testing out HDR10 Plus in 4K. Now, as you can tell by the image, I'm a little bit more overexposed on this. Of course, you can adjust this if you want, but out of camera, you are gonna see this. But it also has this sort of uh, auto framing mode. So if I move to the extreme left or the extreme right, it should be tracking me a little bit to keep me in center frame. Now, if I just move a little bit, you're not gonna notice a difference. But if you do the extreme movements, you'll get that. It's kind of a cool feature and uh, you know, but to each their own. So what do you think? Which do you prefer, HDR10 Plus or non-HDR? Let us know. Now, one of the key attributes of the S22 Ultra is these various different video modes. So if you really wanna get into vlogging, more creative uh, videography, you have director view, view modes in this, inside that. So um, these are really cool features, but not everybody will utilize them. And this is something you have to ask yourself before purchasing one of these phones. Will you take advantage of some of these more advanced features that Samsung is offering, or will you go with more of some of the basic features that uh, Oppo or Xiaomi is offering as well? I mean, they all pretty much have most of the features, and there's apps out there that can give you a lot of these as well. So it really depends on the phone that you like and the image quality that you like the best. But I have to say, Samsung does pack these phones up with some really interesting features for the videographers and photographers out there. All right, guys, as you saw from the Lightroom portion and the video samples out there, each of these phones have their strengths and their weaknesses. And there's no best phone out there. It just depends in terms of what you like out of the camera systems. Now, the Samsung gives you four cameras. It gives you the best video on the front-facing camera out of all the other uh, systems out there. But it's a much larger phone and it's a much more expensive phone. Xiaomi and Oppo are kind of neck and neck in a lot of ways, but I would give the edge to Oppo when it comes to camera features, especially with the Hasselblad partnership. Now, of course, we're all seeing this with the OnePlus series and Hasselblad, of course, is working with Oppo. They're kind of the same company, guys. You know what I mean? So you are gonna see that partnership carry through, but I do love the X-Pan feature. I think it's very unique. I love the film mode where you can shoot and log. It's built into the camera system. This gives you options if you are a videographer out there to grade it if you'd like to do so. And I do love the color science that's coming out of the camera system. It does remind me a lot of what I'm shooting out of the X1D and X1D2 uh, from the Hasselblad. And I really love those uh, that, that color science. Now, it is a little bit more saturated, a little bit more vibrant out of a phone, but you can tone that down in post like I did in Lightroom. Overall, it's gonna be a hard choice to make and it's dependent on your budget, but I would say the most fun I had out of these three did come out of the Oppo Find X5 Pro. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you agree with me? Any questions you have on these camera systems, I'll try to answer those for you. With that, guys, take care, stay safe, subscribe to the channel, and we will chat to you soon. Take care.